Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to train an optic detector with B7. We're actually going to have this data set with different kind of like welds. So we'll basically just jump straight into it. I'm going to show you the data set here that we have. And then we're actually just going to train a model with um, with V7. Then we are going to see the performance of that model. And then also how we can deploy it at the end when we have trained the model. So this is the data set that we're going to use. So we're basically just going to have uh, some different like different welds here. Then we're going to actually monitor if the welds uh, weldings are good or bad. So we'll just see an example here of our data set. So we, we basically just have a bunch of images here. We have 140 images, which is annotated with these like instance uh, segmentation or like with the polygon tool, we can actually use that to do optic detecting as well. So we're going to train an optic detector in this video here. Again, we're going to cover like way more how you can train like um, semantic segmentation, instant segmentation models um, as well. So definitely like hit the subscribe button under the video here and also the bell notification. So you get a notification uh, when I upload new videos with V7 where I show all the capabilities and possibilities that you can actually like, do with V7. So here we can see we have this annotated image. We have like some good welds here. We have three uh, good welds and then we also have a bad weld. So we basically just have this polygon tool here or like this segmentation of the, uh, the different welds. So basically here, this can be used for a lot of different kind of like industrial, like uh, in industrial processes and applications. So this is basically just like visual monitoring of, of, of like weldings, uh, welding systems. It can be used in a lot of different kind of like industrial processes where like things are uh, welded together. We can just see some other different kind of like samples here of uh, of the images in our data set. Here we basically just have the same just for like from another viewpoint. Um, of course, like uh, this can be trained for a lot of different kind of things. So this is probably like some kind of uh, rotor where we're actually like just um, welding these kind of like wings here or like these flaps here to some uh, to some rotor and then could actually like be some some kind of like turbine or something like that. But this can be used for a lot of different kind of like real life application and in industrial processes where we have a lot of welding going on, then we can basically just do visual inspection uh, with these AI models here that we train with V7. So here we're just going to see a couple of examples. Again, we have three good welds and then we have a bad weld here. Here again, we see the exact same things. We're just going to go through our data set. Here we can see that we're basically just rotating around, seeing it from different kind of like angles. So again, this is still a specific problem that we're trying to solve with this AI model and optic detector that we're going to train. But this acts like really good for doing visual inspection for an industrial process. You can train it on your own data set or if you want to like uh, try to like automate some process um, in, the, in, in the industry or you're just creating like a personal project for yourself. Again, you can basically just have your own data set, label it here with 7 and train an optic detector as I'm going to show you. So here we're basically just going to go through a couple of more examples um, of our data set. Then to actually train a model, we will just go back again when we have actually like annotated the whole data set. Then we can go inside the models tab over to the left. Then we can basically just go up at the top, hit train a model. We can see that we first of all need to pick a model uh, model type that we want to train. We can both do instant segmentation. We can actually like, do that with this with the data set that we've labeled now because we have these polygon annotations for the instant segmentation. We can also do optic detection here, which we're going to use if you have actually like, annotated your data set uh, with polygons. You can also do optic detection. It will just, then just draw a bounding box around your objects or like. Uh, the specific thing that you actually like, want to detect. So here we just want to detect if this is a good weld or a bad weld. Um, so object detection is good enough for them. We can also do classification. So if we just did classification, we don't really know like where is the bad and the good welds. So here we're just going to do object detection. We're going to choose that and we hit continue. You can also choose like another name if you want to do that. Now we go down here and choose the data set. So if you have like different data sets, you'll need to choose the one that you want to train. Then we can actually go down and see all the different kind of like classes we have. We can also see the class distribution. So we can see like how many instances do we actually like have of the classes. Here, I'm just going to move my camera so you guys can see what is going on. So we basically just have these bad welds here. We have 204 instances of that. So we can see it's medium low data, but we're actually like able to train the models still. Then if we scroll down, we also have defect here. So we also detect if the welds here are defect or if they're not welded. Uh, welded. So here we have 178 instances of that. And we also have good wells here, which is very overrepresented as this states. So we have 434 of that. So this is basically like the classes that we want to, to train our optic detector on. So we can actually like solve this automation or like we can actually like solve this uh, industrial process with automation. We're using a camera to do visual inspection. 
So that now when we have actually chosen our classes, we're just going to like go away from that one and also the defect here. So we're just choosing like good welds and bad welds. Uh, we can actually go with the defect as well. Then we scroll down to the bottom, hit continue, and then we can actually like just start the training. First of all, we need to specify or like here we can see that we use 80% of our images in the training set. We also have a validation set and a test set. We use 10% for uh, for those validation and test splits. We can see a summary down here at the bottom. We have 241 images. We want to train an update detection model. We have three classes and then we have 816 instances that we have labeled in our data set. Here we can see this, we specified the training time. So it takes up to one hour to actually like train this model on this data set that we have labeled. We can see the training cost. 0.33 credits per minute and then we can actually just use v7 for training our models after that we can deploy our models with v7 as well and then in another video i'm going to show you how we can actually like deploy these models with v7 as well so basically we can just import them into our python script javascript or or stuff like that then we can deploy our model as well we can just like throw in an image we get the response back again then we can do like whatever we want with that output for our application or if you wanted to like try to solve some system um, in the real world like for example in this specific example we want to find if the weldings are good or bad then we can actually just hit start training down at the bottom and it will then give us a summary again we have an estimated cost of 25 credits here on the v7 platform now we're ready we just hit start training and it will act like start training our model up here at the top we can see that the status is now scheduled and then you can see up here when it's done training, then you can either like start your model, deploy it, and you can also see some results of the training. So now our update detector is done training. Here we can actually like see some uh, results after that. So we can see that the model has not been started yet. We can actually like hit start up here at the top right corner. And then we can actually like start deploying our model, import it into our own Python script and so on. We also get some model stats over here to the right. So we can see like the data set name, we can see the training set size, uh, the total train, training time. So it took around like 36 minutes to actually like train this model. We get some pretty nice results as you can see. We can see the mean average position of all like 96%. Uh, we also get like the precision and also the recall uh, a bit further down here. We can also play around with the metrics. So here we have an intersection over union of 50%. So this is basically like the standard that we're using. And then you can also go here with 75 and also the average. So if we go with 75, we get around like 65% um, in, e in, in mean average position. So this is actually like a really good model that we have trained with uh, V7 for actually like uh, finding or like finding where are the good welds and where are the bad welds in our image. We can also read about these different kind of like um, metrics. So we both have like the precision, we have the true positive divided by the true positive plus the false positives. We also have the recall, uh, which acts like takes into account the false negatives as well. So if we actually like miss some detections in the image that should have been detected, then we'll actually like get a lower recall. So we actually like want to have both the precision and also the recall metric. And we also have the intersection over union here, which is basically like the area of our overlap with the ground truth and our predicted bounding box. Uh, and then we actually just divide that by the area of the union, so the whole union. Ideally, we want to have this uh, ratio here equal to one because then we're actually doing our predictions exactly on top of our ground truth. Here we can see the precision recall breakdown. We can see bad, bad world, defect, good, good world, and this uh, minutious. So basically here we can see the precision, the recall, uh, we can also see the number of detections that we had. So we have a pretty decent like precision and also a pretty good uh, recall. So we're actually like doing these um, we're actually like doing these uh, predictions. We can also see the loss graph here. So basically we can see like the, the loss uh, the loss here just declining over the number of epochs. So we can also see the number of epochs uh, which is on the x axis and then the y axis is the loss of our model. So we actually like convert here at the end. So our model has been trained for a 47 epochs. We can see we end up at a loss of 0.15. So this is actually like a pretty good loss for, for this model with only 140 images in our data set. And we only trained it on 120 images. We just basically like just see the loss graph here. We start at a loss of 0.32 and then we just end up with a, point, with a loss of 0.15. So this is actually like a pretty good, uh, pretty good optic detector that we have trained. Now we can actually like see how we can use this uh, deployed model. So if we just go up here at the top, we can basically just hit start. We can then start a model. We can actually like just deploy it here with V7 and then we can load it into our Python script. Then we can basically just like throw in requests to it and then we'll get a response back with the results. 
So here we can basically see like the number of servers that we can choose, start with uh, when invoked, stop with idle and so on. We can also see the estimated cost down here at the bottom. So it's 0 0.03 credits per minute uh, when we're actually like, deploying this model. Then we can just hit start at the bottom. And now our model is actually like, um, up running. We have deployed our model with V7. And then we can actually like, go down and see how we can deploy this model that we have just started an instance with. First of all, we can see how to deploy it in the CLI. And we can see how like, some examples with Python, Shell, JavaScript, and Elixir. So here we have the API access. First of all, we need to pip install uh, Darwin Pi, Darwin Authenticate. Then we basically just enter our API key. We have our name and our data set. Then we can actually go down here and use our API keys. Either we can generate like a new key or add an existing key. If we want to do, do an example in Python, for example, which is often the case, then we can just import base64 and request. We set up our API key. We have our images that we actually like want to pass through our model. Then we basically just uh, then we basically just have like an URL where we just post our image to, or like we just send uh, send um, we just send a request to our deployed model in v7. We get a response back again. It will be stored in this result variable. We can print the results, and then we can use the results from our actual like forward pass of our model. So this will be our predictions. We can use that for whatever we want inside of Python. We can also do it in shell here. This is an, another example of how we can do it in shell with curl. We can also see an example with JavaScript and Elixir here at the end. So again, it's basically just like taking an image, loading in an image in your uh, programming language, throw it into the model on the web, you will get the response back and then you can do whatever you want with the response uh, and the predictions in your own code afterwards. So this is actually like really cool. It's really easy to get started, train models. You can basically just upload your data set to V7, uh, label them with the tools that V7 has. They also have like AI uh, auto annotation tools. You can train a model, like you can use that model to actually like do predictions and label new data in your data set. And you can create these workflows that we have talked about throughout all the videos here in this playlist. I have a whole playlist with V7 videos where I go over like all the capabilities, how to label data set, medical images, workflows, how to actually like set up workflows. So this is really cool. Upload your data set, annotate your data set, and then you can directly train models with V7. And when you have trained your model, you can also deploy them. You get some really nice examples of how we can actually like deploy them in Python. Uh, and then you just have an instance running here in V7. You just make requests or like you just make requests to this model, deploy it, you get the response back and then you can use it in your own applications. So now it's actually like really easy with the V7 platform to actually like create and solve AI problems in the real world as we just did in this video here with this welding process where we want to detect like bad and good worlds. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. Uh, I'm definitely going to create way, way more uh, videos with V7. This is a really cool tool that you can use for AI and just like training, training different kind of like models, creating some really nice workflows. Uh, you can actually like create workflows where you have like different kind of like stages. You can assign um, different stages to collaborators and so on. So if you're interested in more about V7, I'll link to the tutorial up here or else I'll see you next week, guys. Bye for now.